Welcome back, boys. Sorry I've been a little bit distant lately. I am under the pump hard, and today I'm going to show you exactly why. <laughs> I'm going to just give you a bit of a project update um, and a little bit of a day in the life and just show you what's going on behind the scenes and why I haven't been consistent in posting. Um, it has been a bit of a struggle, but that's okay. We're here on site at one of our um, jobs, uh, the deck in Pagola. Um, and I'm just gonna give you a bit of update on this right now. <sighs> Dave has been struggling. Here we are. The man behind the camera has actually pretty much built this whole deck, which is freaking pretty epic, eh? <laughs> you can say something. Pretty epic, dude. <laughs> Oh, that yeah, old Mikey boy is doing a fairly fantastic job. We have Fabiano here. Okay, we'll just give you a bit of a run through. So, existing deck. This is done about four years ago by moi. But now what we're doing is we're extending this new deck all the way through and around the other side. Um, so we've done a bit of playing around with um, these stairs, putting in some stainless steel fixings. Obviously, we've put new cladding in on the outside. Um, and bolted on the stringers. Everything's pretty much standard. Um, as we come through, we've obviously had to put new Z flashing in and cladding. Now we re reinstated these old battens, but man, they're pretty hoary. Um, and they didn't actually run all the way down to the underneath side of the cladding. Um, and that's because we actually stemmed the cladding. So we're gonna remove this. We, we tried to make this look pretty, but it's just, What's the point in reinstating this old stuff when we're building this freaking mass, massive, beautiful deck? So, um, there's a few things that we'll just pick up on now while I'm here. Um, we're going to have a 6x2 handrail capping that comes along and through and around like this. Now, I've spoken to Michael. Um, he sort of just went through and set these posts up, but we're going to have a weird intersecting point um, when we go to put our bottom rail on and where our top cap sort of joins in through here. It's not really gonna fit in with the rest of the system that's, that we've sort of built through here. So we sort of came up with a plan and we're actually gonna put two posts in each corner. Um, let's just say this is a post, so another post will come in here. We're gonna leave about a 70 mil gap um, so it doesn't look so big and bulky and that way the top cap can come through and then this top cap come, can come through and just join nicely on each post and then that way it means we can sort of get rid of this post here um, and then the same thing in this corner um, we'll just move this post over slightly and then put another one here so we can get good continuity on the um, top caps now uh, pretty much the plan of attack for the day I think is we want to try and get stuff ready to rock and roll uh, for the client so you can paint so the top cap is going to be one of them um, Another thing I want to mention as we get into the stage where we need to start making decisions on um, the goaler, um, the height, where our beam sits, the angle, and all that sort of carry on. So sort of set a temporary thing up so the clients can get a better understanding on how big they want it. And um, we were actually talking about it yesterday. It's crazy if you um, upgrade like an outdoor space like this, the rest of the scenery like starts to become like nice, like brighter. Um, and what's going to be pretty cool about this is once the Pecola's in, it sort of looks like a big picture like this, so it's pretty neat. Um, now, because we've got 6x2 joists, um, the maximum spacing for our posts is about no more than one meter centers, so uh, we have to set things up um, in accordance to 3604, which we're doing, which is really cool. Um, so, we're going to chop the tops of these posts now that we know this, and um, that's pretty much where our beam's going to sit. We're going to push it up about a hundred more mil. Now we're going to chop those. We're actually going to cut the top cap and slide it over the top of the top of the post. So we've got one continuous top cap that flows all the way through, which is going to look beautiful. Um, but that's pretty much the update for now. Oh, and another little thing over here. Just spin around like that. Yeah. Um, we sort of set up um, just deciding on what balustrade system is going to look best. Um, of course, we can't have any space bigger than 100 mil, so um, we're sort of setting things up in such a way that we can construct a panel and then just stick it in. Uh. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, so just sort of giving uh, the kind of idea on what, what well, they actually came up with this idea, we just built it and they're happy with it. So um, that's pretty much the gist of what the balustrade's going to look like, which is pretty cool. But yeah, nice little update. Some pretty big deck. So yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's pretty much me, I set the boys up, um, they're going to focus on the little bits and pieces that we just discussed about today and I'll be back in there to help them out tomorrow, i just got to do some ciphers and say. You're like, shh, shh, <laughs> not going like, to happen. Yeah, whatever, but um, yeah, sweet, what do you guys reckon, leave in the comments below how wicked this is, it's pretty fucking wicked. Oh, oh I better mention. 140 by 20 Vitex decking, um, stainless. Yeah, the camera cut off, but you get the gist. Beautiful decks, beautiful people, beautiful day. <laughs> Alright, just made it to the Epson job. We'll go check out, see what the boys are doing. They're roof framing at the moment. I think there's one little detail that we've got to sort out, so we'll go check that out and um, give you a bit of an update walkthrough on this one. Woo! Alright, boys are freaking smashing it, look! Um, trusses are up and in, uh, so feet framing is going on, ready for fascias. Um, valley boards were in, but obviously a bit of a nightmare to get down and into all this, but Got all our hips nice and straight, finally. <laughs> Fuck, that was a bit of a nightmare. It's been a minute, but um, Miles is fucking smashing it, man. Um, so I'll just show you that detail that we're struggling with. Now it's quite a common detail, but as as you know, we haven't done roofing for <laughs> roof framing like this that meets at apex for a while. So um, this is the detail here. We've got a valley that sort of meets another roof line. Now Miles was saying. We're trying to figure out exactly like do we do bend the freaking do we do we do we bend the valley along this way like that but no <laughs> what happens is the valley comes through and it kicks up a bit out on top of the iron then the iron comes through like that pretty much like you can't see it over there but <laughs> it's like a little dormer detail um but it's just got netting over the top so nothing gets in that spouting um, but yeah, just head scratcher for, for the moment. <laughs> but just coming through, roof, we're sort of just prepping all this for our roof that's going on um, next Wednesday. So we've got an inspection on Monday, which we should have everything done. We've got four days, three and a half, four days to do. Um, my only concern here is we have an internal gutter system. I'll just come around and show you. But yeah, looks looking really good. All feet framing getting sussed. 450 Safites. Um, got the delivery, all our fascias and our battens showed up yesterday. Um, we got Carwinner, he's helping us out um, just for the meantime through higher stuff. But um, this is our internal gutter that we sort of need to get inspected for the waterproofing on Monday. Uh, making sure that our falls are correct and the screw patterns using stainless screws, stainless. Um, a 3.2 ply um, just finish that off and um, fuck yeah we're looking good strap braces are on it's not going to take much I mean there's still a bit fair bit of work to do but all the fixings the truss fixings are on Z nails holding the um, top plate to the truss we've got our blue screws those were came pre-nail top plate connectors all that sort of shit so it's coming along well I better go downstairs because I don't know when the last time you've seen it, but fuck. <laughs> and like a little, another little detail is pretty much we have to have our building paper in and up um, before we start putting our uh, our Safit framing in, um, and that's just a regulation under the building code. <laughs> uh, first story. Through. Look at this, beautiful. Looking pretty good. Um, never used this product before. It's a Secura um, Hardy Flex, well not Hardy Flex, but Secura flooring from Hardy's. It's a uh, 19 mil thick, 600 long, uh, 600 wide. Um, and it sort of um, acts as a tile and slate for the, for the bathroom. And I think it's gonna be quite nice. 
just a real prick to work with because none of the edges, apparently Miles says none of the edges are square, so you're tripping everything and trying to cut hardies at 19 mil is just a bastard, but yeah. Um, so obviously bathroom and stairwell, another bathroom, bedrooms. Woo! So the boys are smashing it there, super stoked, um, doing really, really well, so happy as about that. Now um, there's a few small issues, there's a couple of scaff poles um, coming up through the Safit framing um, that we're sort of going to want to um, try and um, sort out, so I'm going to call Nick the project manager for that job, um, that's the one we're just doing labour only for QPC, so get him to sort of sort that out. We've also got skylights that we thought about, so we need to get the specs on the skylights um, and what we need to do to frame that out that all sorted before the roof goes in and then um, of course we've got the also we've got that small issue about um, the waterproofing happening prior to the, our framing inspection so I might have to just push that out one day um, and see how that goes but um, for now all rolling good looks like we're all on schedule to get that roof down next week um, and then we should be freaking into wrapping wrapping up Woo! smashing that job out it's good Okay, sweet as, Whew, that phone call went pretty well with Nick. Um, he's gonna be shooting the site um, over in Epson around 11 o'clock anyway, so Miles will show him around the, um, the scaffolding that's sort of in the way of the roof. Um, and then uh, we also got some good news about the skylights that are going in. So they're not, sky well they're skylights, but they're actually sun tubes. So you lay the roof first, then cut the hole out later, which is really, really good. And then um, just got confirmation on the roofer that's coming to the the roof. He's gonna be out there on Thursday. Uh, and so Mars can talk to him about um, some of the details and make sure that we've got everything uh, tickety-boo on that front. But it uh, looks like we've got some bad weather coming in the next couple of days, so that might push things out a, a little bit. But hey, we'll just see how it goes. Um, but yeah, I'm now heading to another job we completed last week, just a retaining wall and a fence um, just to show you about um, and yeah so this job we completed last week with big dog vincent we've got a 1.5 high retaining wall um, double skinned uh, with some big 200 mil um, washer head screws stainless steel going all the way through the posts um, the posts cut a little bit lower it's underneath there um, and we put a little bit of uh, metal X on the top just to sort of preserve the top of the post um, with this fence that sort of sits about 1.8 high all the way along. Now the reason we sort of installed this um, is because there was an existing block wall that was sort of about this high that ran all the way through and it was failing. Um, so we cut the blocks off to roughly around this height um, and then we drilled new holes um, in line with this wall um, and just to give you a rewind a little bit this retaining wall um, actually wasn't straight from that point there it sort of returned in a little bit but I think it was best um, to sort of make sure that the retaining wall lined up with this existing um, block wall and fence so everything sort of kept parallel um, and a bit of continuity through there um, so it's a bit of a struggle you can actually sort of see now if you guys can see this if I step back um, but you can sort of see the fence on one side it pulls in like that and then this side's nice and straight parallel with the fence so um, I'm here just to take some photos of that um, top of the fence there hey how you doing no you're all right um, and get some uh, measurements and we're going to actually put a cat flashing on the top of that um, but yeah we've got some nice finger jointed um, corners like this um, and we just arrest all the edges making sure that they're nice and clean um, and flush and tight 
Now the poles themselves are 200 SEDs and they went two and a half meters down into the ground. And then a little bit of an afterthought was, I can't really go over there because we've top sawed this, but this little section here, there's actually an old school retaining wall behind that as well. So once that gets filled up, um, it's sort of clean this whole area out. Now, um, we use something pretty cool. Instead of scoria um, in behind the wall with a bit of drainage, um, we use this stuff called No Finds Concrete, uh, which I've never ever seen or used before. But it pretty much means that there's no sand in the, the concrete itself. It's like a, I think it's about a t 10 mil chip um, with just cement. And um, it comes out real bony dry, like pretty much, excuse me, pretty much like scoria itself. Um, and you throw it in and then it goes rock hard. And what that's doing is pretty much um, pushing any of the pressure that's going to be against that block wall, that failing one, up against our new retaining wall um, through here. So that's pretty cool. All right, I'm just going to get that um, flashing measured up, send it off. Um, and there, go from there. We'll head up to the basement conversion after this. We go check on the boys. All right, back at the basement conversion. Look at this. Got our hypoxy system down. Um, prevent any water coming through. The, um, the block work and the, um, the slab down underneath, lapping over all our joins and all that sort of stuff. We've put systems in place underneath that too, just to make sure that we're fully watertight. Um, now the boys are, are going to um, <coughs> start framing out. You can see our starter's been epoxied in, epoxied over. Um, yeah, but the boys are smashing it out. We've got our big high spans in, big beams come through connecting our joists together um, and then our low points coming down on top of here one here and then one over here a little bit of an awkward situation in this one um, we had existing um, garage door and all that sort of stuff so we've actually got a few packers in there to be honest with you but that is where it is <laughs> looking at that lintel straps in all papered up ready to go we've got framing inspection on Monday uh, we've got the plumbers and the sparky coming in for a meeting on Friday um, just to run over a few bits and pieces in the morning go through with the clients because they're going away um, another little issue we had is if we come outside the existing hey <laughs> the heck <laughs> no. uh, we've got this existing cladding uh, which is a 5 cement board uh, and it comes in it's a 240 mil wide board right um, and that is um, discontinued now um, Hardy's doesn't make a board there's no no suppliers that make a 240 so we've had to go through and get a 300 mil um, Hardy plank and then rip it down to 240 so we can match it with the existing cladings um, we've also got a few details that I've just picked up on um, which is we need to put some corner flashings in um, right here for our framing inspection. I'm just going to try to do framing and wrap at the same time. Um, and then we've also got, um, I don't know if you guys can see, but our framing drops down. Our framing drops down through here. Now, this is a direct hook system, so we're sort of matching off the existing. So it's sort of a weird detail, but we're going to have to do a chase flashing. We're chasing a flashing along here. Come down. 15 mil past the bottom plate um, and then we'll um, silicon in with some 11 FC a Dyna flash. Dyna flash is like a flexible um, flashing that you can sort of mold to the shape that you need. Um, so we'll silicon that in and then we'll fold it over the top of the paper. So the paper will be here and then we'll fold it over the top and staple it like that. That way any water that tries to get in has to go over the over the um, flashing and then there'll be um, a little bit of a water stop a little black thing that stops the water from getting in and it'll just travel right down um, we're also going to put our um, direct fix patterns on the side here getting things ready for um, yeah our cavity framing and and wrap I guess we could say um, what are you doing tomorrow <laughs> what do you guys got for smoker anyway 
Yeah. None for you. Corn and beef. I noticed your chin was getting wet, chubby. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so we've just got the existing paper lapping um, cool. over the new stuff. Uh, we need at least 150 mil there, which is good that the boys have done that. And this. Um, and then, yeah, and the same thing here. So the boys um, have had to remove um, the weatherboard that was up underneath there. Well, it wasn't actually a weatherboard. It was um, a hardy sheet, right? Two four by 12 um, that went up in there. So he had to brace the um, brace the deck up, pull the bolts out, pull the, pull the hardies out, and we've just temporarily packed it there for now. Um, and then when we get our weatherboards um, yep. and the correct paint that we're just trying to suss out now, yep. um, we'll paint it and we'll stick one back up in there and put the proper um, systems in place with a 12 mil packer and our um, our EPD and washers, etc. Really? But that's just being su supportive for now. Now there's another little detail. Just these small things that we sort of need to take into consideration to make things watertight is um, the end of our um, mowing line, well, inside sort of finishes pretty much right here. Now we want to tuck a flashing in behind the existing hardies and then our weatherboards so any water that penetrates through this joint will come all the way through. We'll just get rid of this jointer. You can see they've actually already put one in here uh, which is really good. Um, so we'll just remove that. That way we've got that system in place and we'll, we'll box it or scribe it and um, make things really, 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 really nice. But everything's going pretty smoothly here. Um, just trying to keep on top of things, all these bloody jobs. Um, coming in and just trying to solve problems and also put the penny on, eh? But um, yeah, all in all, pretty stoked. We'll just um, keep chugging along here and do another update. What else have we got? What else have we sort of, it's about it, eh? That's it. That's it, sweet. So we'll write a, I'll write a list and we'll just get everything sorted for that, eh? Beauty. Sweet. Peace. Right, so the boys aren't doing too badly there. It's been a bit slow um, with everything because there's just been so many little bits and pieces that keep popping up on that job. Um, but I think we're now ready to attack most of the framing. We'll get all the framing sorted um, and then hopefully we can get um, a wrap inspection as well uh, on, on Monday. That'd be so freaking cool. Uh, that way we can start cleaning out, cleaning out. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm just calling and confirming uh, um, the Sparky and the plumber for Friday morning for a meeting, just to run through the, with the clients, positioning of lights, etc., uh, etc., et uh, light switches, you know, the, just the, the same old deal. Uh, and yeah, so plumber's all good to go first thing uh, Friday morning, but the, the Sparky uh, still is up in the air, so hopefully, we can get him booked in nice and early as well. Nice early morning starts. Get those out of the way. Uh, but yeah, all going well. All going according to plan. Just always trying to just make sure that the sights are rolling through and any details that I can see that are going to cause issues, just pick them up. Um, write it on the whiteboard. Make sure that they've got it in the back of their head. Uh, and then, yeah, just move on to the next. So I'm just going to shoot shoot home I've got some materials there I've got to pick up and then I'm gonna head to another client's place to finish off a few stairs that I was doing last weekend um, get that all finished up uh, and also of course have some smoko Jorika smoko but yeah um, not, a, not a little bad start to the morning 11 o'clock visit the sites make sure everyone's going good um, but yeah So I made it back, had Smoko, check it out, stairs, a nice big stairs so you can sit here, have a beer, do your thing, 21, so I'm just going to come through, I sort of already started, um, but I was chatting to the client while I was doing it, so um, I pretty much finish it, I just finished off this little border through here, um, and trimmed the ends off, now I'm just using my 3mm, <laughs> To draw the ends, wedge it out, and then I'm just going to nail this off, and then I'm going to start on the faces. Um, and then there's also a little detail we've got to sort out up here. Wedgy, wedgy, screwy, screwy, drilly, drilly, sorry, nail, nail.
okay. The weather is absolutely turned to crap, but it's not that cold, so. Um, what I've done is I've run a string line, working on this top piece now. I've run a string line from end to end. I'm gonna put packers every 600s, um, and then I'm going to put my border board on top of here. Now this is, this is a 20 mil decking, not a 32, so I actually might put my face board on first before I put my top one on. And that's gonna sort of clean that edge up. And that's pretty much gonna be me for the day. Um, I got all my boundaries on, um, sort of cleaned that up, put my piece on, boundary along there. Um, did the best I could at this situation um, without pulling the sticking up and it would look funny with a different color, but yeah. Um, I wanna get some 140 by 32 to finish the rest of the bits off. My 90 mil just isn't gonna, I don't know. It might look all right, but you can sort of see what's happening. You can see underneath through there, so I just wanna get a big piece of timber. And what that's also gonna do is I'll rip it tight so it fits in there nicely. Um, and that'll support this edge as well, a little bit better. Um, but yeah, thanks for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm going to have a bit of a pack up. You can see that we've been freaking flat out. I'm trying my best to do the filming. But um, some days I'll be on one job, then I'll be on another. Some days I'll be looking at jobs or pricing or trying to hire people or, you know, just all sorts. We've, I've hired two new people in the last three weeks to keep up with the work. Um, yeah, a new guy. Um, William started today, he's had five years experience and then um, Michael um, who's doing the Huia job, he's um, had about five or six years experience too, um, qualified chippy and he just works his freaking ass off, great quality um, and all that sort of stuff so super happy with him, um, he's able to run a job already so it's pretty cool but um, yeah Peace, I'll see you on the next one. I have been filming, but I don't know how good the videos are going to be, so um, my editor is actually my apprentice as well, so um, he's having to be on site and all that sort of character. Anyway, doesn't matter. Peace!